Welcome to this episode of Sewing 101. In this episode, we're gonna make a really cool dog jacket for a larger dog, and it's reversible, so the dog will have actually two vests to wear. This project's being done at the request of some of my friends who said that they would like to know how I've made jackets um, for my dogs through the years. I've made jackets for dogs for a long time. It's kind of a hobby that I have of trying to customize things. And in my neighborhood, when someone gets a new dog, we have dog showers. <laughs> and so I'll make something for it, sometimes out of fabric. Sometimes I knit a sweater. I really like doing that. And um, I, I don't make clothing for humans, but I like making it for dogs because they rarely complain about the fit or the quality. <laughs> so why don't we get started by looking over the uh, supplies that we're going to need for this project. Let's talk about the fabric first. You can get two different types of fabrics. It kind of helps if they're complementary, but they don't have to be because you usually don't, you only see one side at a time on this vest. It hides the other side pretty well. Uh, I chose um, fabrics that could be washed easily and I washed them ahead of time so that they, so that they would be pre-shrunk before I started the project. I got some complementary thread. This will be on both sides and it works for both sides. And of course a bobbin to go with that. Uh, Velcro, uh, that will be used on the front closure of the vest. Now we're gonna make our own pattern. Now you can do that by measuring the dog, which is what we're gonna do. Or if you already have a jacket that you really like, you can use that and um, just kind of trace around it to be the pattern that you wanna use for, for this one. Um, you need a measuring tape because we're gonna use that when we measure the dog. I got a little notepad here so they can write down what the dog measures. Um, and then for a final pattern, I make it out of fabric, and this is uh, a denim, a white denim fabric. It doesn't really matter, and I always mark it for which dog it's for, and uh, it looks like, to me, it looks like a, those bibs you wear at the lobster places when you get lobster, but that's the shape that we're going to make it, and I'm going to tell you how to do that for your dog so it's a custom fit. And then, of course, you know, your scissors and your pins and your sewing machine. Now, let's get started. Our model for this project is a golden Labrador retriever named Max. Max is the dog of my friend Stacy, who's also a neighbor. The first measurement we take will be of Max's neck. Notice I'm not measuring him at his collar line, I'm measuring him lower where the jacket will actually fit. Of course, the order of where you measure doesn't matter, but next I measure Max's back, and that's from where the jacket begins, up at the top of the neck, down to the bottom where I want it to go on the back. This measurement shows that I'm going to measure from the top of the back down to the side where I would like the jacket to um, end. I'm going to take it just a couple of measurements and make sure that they are consistent along the back. The last measurement I'm taking is the one around Max's chest. This tells me the maximum size of the dog and also it tells me how long my strap will need to be. Now that we have Max's measurements, we can make our first um, copy of the pattern. I do it on paper so that I can make as many mistakes as I want and clean it up. Remember that our, the length that we wanted on max is 15 inches. Um, that is from the area that we want, I'm going to consider this the back, the, the, that's from the area we want the vest to end on his back and this will represent his neckline. All right, the next measurement is his neck was 25 inches around and so we're going to go from this mark here and we're going to go at approximately a 45 degree angle from that mark 
and because it was 25 that means half of that is 12 and a half remember I'm only making half of the pattern right now I'll make the full one on the on the fabric and then I want to add I want to add two and a half inches for uh, to have enough room for the closure so there's one two two and a half right here so in Max's case that's that's actually 15 by 15 I don't know if that'll work out for every dog, but maybe that's proportional. The next measurement is going to be from the back down to where we said we wanted the, the, the vest to fit along the side of the dog, and that's 8 inches. All right, so now I have this mark. This basically marks the end. There's the neck, and I have the... Um, the closure for the neck out here. So since this is here, I'm going to draw here and I'm going to go up like that so that it meets. It's not that hard of a line to draw. You see it there. And then and then I want to have it also come to my neckline and I'm going to have it come up just a little bit right there all right if it helps you visually you can go ahead and draw a line there and then <clears throat> from here I'm gonna go out to this point that's gonna be your very the most difficult line that you have to make because what you got to do is kind of envision the dog and it's gonna kind of curve out to that line curve back here go like that now I'm looking at that and I may actually want to adjust that and say well I would rather it curve a little bit more but I still want to retain my length so when I do do my final pattern so what I'm going to do now is I am going to cut this out and I'm going to, before I cut fabric or anything crazy, I'm going to hold this against Max and see how it looks on him. I'm going to make any adjustments. I could actually, if I wanted to, cut, you know, out to here or whatever. And, um, I, but this will be my first draft of a pattern. So don't be scared. You can't really screw this up too bad. If, it's, if you want to make a couple of versions because you think, well, was that neck longer or, or do I want to see this longer, make a couple of versions and then go back to the dog because um, it's a custom piece for Max and we want it to fit him very well. So once I cut out the paper pattern, I took it back to Max. I held it there to see how it was going to fit and you could pretty much see that it was going to work and that I could now move on to the next step. So after um, going back and forth, um, I think it only took me about two or three times to fit on uh, Max before I came up with my final design um, for the, using the paper. And then I'm ready to go on the fabric. One of the things that I thought was kind of cute is this, uh, this shape actually looks like kind of an animal, you know, of some sort, maybe a dinosaur or something. But anyway, this uh, will make my, my fabric pattern. And at this point, if you want to just use the paper when that's okay, you know, because you can use it over and over again and save yourself some fabric and some steps, I just find it really handy to have this in a, a fabric uh, form uh, for use over and over again. Uh, if you do that, mark on it who it's for, what it's for, um, but paper kind of doesn't last as long as the fabric. This fabric, of course, is folded because I, it needs to be the whole vest. Although, again, so many options. I mean, don't limit yourself. Um, and if you think of a better idea than what I've got here, my goodness, use it. Uh, but the other thing is you could use a single piece of fabric for your fabric pattern and then just fold your final fabric and that would be um, kind of the best of both worlds because you would use a minimal amount of, of fabric for your pattern and um, 
but you would have the pattern in fabric. So whatever you want to do, but, but um, this is your final customized pattern for your dog. In this step, I've taken the cutout cloth pattern and I've gone back to Max just one more time to make sure that it's going to work out okay before I go to my final fabric and I make sure that the closure fits correctly and that it fits all the way down the dog. I also take this opportunity to mark where uh, I'm going to be putting the straps for the, for the vest. I finished cutting out the vest using the pattern and remember it should look like this with a, while it's still on the pattern it should have about a quarter of an inch it doesn't need to be perfect um, around the outside of the pattern in order to create a seam allowance now i've removed all of the pins but before i removed the pattern from the fabric i marked here because remember that's where we're going to have straps and I don't want to lose that marker and so I've marked on both sides and on both of the fabric types where I want to put that strap when I sew the pieces together. With that in place I had some extra material which you usually do when you're sewing. I'm going to remove the pattern that's going to be one side of our vest. And remember, this is the side that will be on the um, outside showing. And this is also one of the pieces that will be on the outside showing. And I thought, you know, that's a pretty fabric, but it's a little plain. So I created um, out of the extra fabric some pockets that I'm going to have kind of um, Actually, what I'm going to do so that I know how to position them, I'm going to fold my vest in half, just like that. That way, I'll be able to know that my pockets are positioned um, exactly on, in the same position on both sides. And so that's probably going to be a good base uh, placement. I want it to be straight with the back here. I also want to have plenty of room for the strap and for the seam binding. So I think that's going to be a really nice um, size pocket. Now I could pin it in order to sew it, but I really like to use something called steam -a seam and it's just um, an adhesive so you, you can just tear off pieces that you need. And I'll be doing this on the ironing board, but um, you can put a piece in there. You can press it. I'll do that all the way around that surface and it will adhere it and actually strengthen the bond and then I'll stitch it um, to make a final bond with the fabric between the two fabrics. And then I'll have a nice little pocket. I might even make a little divider here so that the pocket actually has two. You could have maybe a, a poo bag in one and a treat for later. <laughs> anyway, so that's what I'm going to do to embellish the outside before, before I sew the two sides together. So let me finish that and then what we'll do is show how to put the strap on so that this uh, vest will have a fastener for the dog. You can buy strapping at the um, fabric store to use to secure the vest onto the dog. But what I've done in this case is I had an extra collar. I have a bunch of these and uh, it has that webbing. And so I'm just gonna use this collar and I cut it. I cut this end off of it. Look, this is, to, you know, the, I keep these uh, together <laughs> so that I don't lose them until, um, until I'm ready to secure it onto the other side. But what I've found is that if I don't do something here, these, these ends ravel. So they're nylon and they melt pretty darn easily. So I'm going to try to just kind of cauterize or the ends of it. I don't want to catch it on fire, but it actually here, I'm going to move this closer to the camera. It actually will just kind of melt shut and 
that will keep it raveling because it, it left alone that's that'll do it um it it could ravel you know and cause problems in being secure to the piece and i don't want that so so now we're ready to start putting the two pieces of the vest together to stitch um, so that means my next step is going to be putting the straps on now notice that i didn't cut the strap that I'm using in half and the reason I didn't is I kind of want this on the side of the dog so that it's easy to snap into place and so you're not reaching around the dog to try to snap it so that's why if you're wondering well, why isn't it cut in half um, that's the reason now so this one will go here and so I'm going to take my pin and pin it in place and then uh, the other one will go on the other side and i don't want to catch the other one um, you know sewing it uh, accidentally so what i'm going to do is actually make use out of the pocket that i made and put this in the pocket while i secure this part now i'm going to kind of eyeball it one more time to make sure that they are opposite each other and because this is going to be a stressed area because of the it may tug a little bit on the dog i'm going to sew these straps down first before i put the two right sides together and sew the entire vest together so let me go ahead and tack those together and to do that all i'm going to do is take my sewing machine and just go back and forth a couple of times to secure that. And then when I, I'm going to try to, I'm not going to make it as deep as I am the seam so that it doesn't show. So I want to, I want to make this whole thing really secure. You never know what Max might be doing. He likes to chase his ball a lot. I want this as flat as possible. I've already matched the bottom. So all I have to do is bring it up, match the two sides together smooth them out they should because they were cut together match just about perfectly and now I will pin it together so that I can take it to the sewing machine and join them now when I sew it remember I'm going to keep an area down here at the bottom open so that I can turn it to the right sides so let's pin it and then stitch it. I've decided to um, leave this bottom portion. I'm going to leave about this much of it open for the turn when I'm done stitching. So that means I'm going to start my stitching right here. And I'm going to go all the way around the piece following all of the curves and the straps for the front and that sort of thing. So um, that's what I'm just about ready to do now. Got the piece uh, stitched all the way around like um, we planned <laughs> and now it's time to turn it right side out I always kind of get excited about this part because it's when you start really seeing the project come together okay I sewed around all of the edges remember I left an opening and then turned the piece so that my right sides are now facing out and as much as I could I made the um, made sure that the seams looked good and so the next step um, is to press it so that it looks really good because I'm going to go along and top stitch um, the edge and that'll give it a nice uh, more professional look and it won't um, slide around to where you can see one side on the other side you'll you'll it'll make it so that it always has a crisp look on both sides. Okay, so I'm done pressing it. I can see already that just, just pressing it gives it a more, you know, crisp and um, professional look. I got a little piece of lint right there. We'll take care of that. I'm gonna turn off my iron and the next step is to top stitch all the way around and that really helps it look uh, professional so let's go do that right now the only part that I 
pinned is that part where I pressed it um, but it was open for the turning. Other than that, I don't have to pin anything and I'm ready to sew. I think I'll start down here um, on the bottom where, where I pinned it. Now, um, I want to top stitch it a little less than a quarter and I'm just going to eyeball that with keeping that quilting foot that has the quarter inch measurement on it. I'm just going to kind of um, pick a spot and uh, do, do an inside stitch all the way around the piece. The top stitching is all done. Isn't that great? And now uh, we're going to apply some Velcro for the neck opening to keep that secure. I'm trying this new Velcro. I've never tried it before. You know how usually you get two pieces and one is uh, sticks to the other piece and they're, they're different? Well, this Velcro is uh, touted as being snag free and uh, it only comes in one piece. But the beauty of that is, is that it uh, sticks to itself. So you don't have to have the two separate pieces and that sort of thing. And um, we'll see how it works. It'll, this will be my first project with it. So I can't vouch for it yet, but I'm hoping it works well. We don't need a real tight closure there at the neck. Um, it's more around the waist that'll get stressed. So the, the dog is uh, gonna have its head through there and this will cross over in the front. So what I'm going to do is, I don't know if you can see this, but I'll move this down a little bit. So that'll be the measurement of my Velcro. And I'm going to try I, I, one or two pieces. I, I think I'm going to feel more secure, especially with this new type of having two pieces on each side for the closing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut four pieces basically of uh, this uh, Velcro strip and then sew two pieces, um, well actually two pieces here and two pieces here so that, <clears throat> just demonstrate this a little bit, so they'll just uh, two pieces there, two pieces here so that when this closes, either way, with the plaid out or the red out, it'll close like that. And the Velcro will hold it. Let's hope. The Velcro pieces are now in place. And let me show you. Uh, remember, these were two distinct, actually four distinct different pieces and the and the way I sewed this and it's much easier to see it on this is that I went around um, all four of them like in a box and then I and then I made an X with a stitch double over doubled over and then came this way and that's keeping that secure so the way that this works is if it's on the dog this way, no problem. It goes together like that. And frankly, um, I can just, and then the, the side straps will, will hook. And then if the other side is a, it looks like a magic trick. If the other side is uh, showing, then it'll look like this. I can't wait to try it on Max and see how it looks and see if he likes it. Well, here we are trying on the vest on Max. He looks a little apprehensive, but then he shows me that he likes the red side with the pockets as well as the plaid side. He really likes that side. And finally, it seems like he's pretty darn proud of his new jacket. There you go, Max. Such a good boy. So that's it for this episode of Sewing 101. I hope you found it helpful and that you have the best looking dog in the neighborhood after you're done. And for now, let's end this segment by helping Max do what he does best. Come on, Max, go! <laughs> Goodbye, Max, you're so cute!